Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, lived a beautiful girl named Cinderella. After Cinderella's kind mother died, her father married Lady Puffy. Lady Puffy had two arrogant, jealous, and quarrelsome daughters, just like herself. They would fight for hours, even over something as simple as a hairbrush. Ah, stop it! I said stop it! Give it back, it's mine! No, no! One day, Cinderella's father had to take a long journey. Lady Puffy took this chance to give all the hard work in the house to poor Cinderella. Cleaning the whole house, carrying wood to the fireplace, and preparing meals took up all of Cinderella's time. Despite her hard work, Lady Puffy and her daughters were cruel and proud. Mother, Cinderella is filthy. Don't let her eat in the same room with us. Don't let her sleep in our room. We're having nightmares. You heard what my beautiful daughters have said. Go and find a place to sleep in the attic. <laughs> Poor Cinderella settled in a dusty old room in the attic. Out of her small window, she looked down to the garden. And from time to time, she would talk to a snow-white pigeon. Why, hello, sweet pigeon. As the days went on by, while cleaning up her room in the attic, Cinderella met two little mice. Who are you, little guys? Hi, I'm Cheddar. I am Mozzarella. And I am Cinderella. You little guys love to eat cheese, don't you? I will prepare a delicious meal for you. Yes, 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 yes! yes, yes. We are starving! We haven't been able to go to the kitchen for hours. There is a mean, hairy, sharp monster down there. That nasty cat, Papu. First thing tomorrow morning, I'm going to prepare a delicious breakfast for you two. The next morning, Cinderella went to the kitchen without making any noise. The mean cat, Papu, waited in front of the tiny mouse hole in the kitchen to hunt Cheddar and Mozzarella. Cinderella silently took some pieces of cheese and headed to the attic. But then, Lady Puffy's daughters caught her. What are you holding in your hand? And where are you going with it? Um, it's just some cheese for breakfast. Mom, Cinderella is stealing our food. I'm stealing? I would never steal anything. A thief and a liar. What an evil girl you are. The little mice went downstairs and started to run around the kitchen to scare the evil sisters. Ah! Oh no! A mouse! There's a mouse in the house! Mom, I'm scared! Not one mouse, it's two! Ah! Lady Puffy was just about to catch the mice when there was a knock at the door. The royal ambassador arrived! <clears throat> His Majesty the Royal Prince has prepared a grand ball at the castle tomorrow night. All the young ladies around the country are invited to this ball. As soon as they heard about the grand ball, Jezebel and Cassandra ran with huge excitement to their rooms and started to pick dresses for this important evening. Also, Lady Puffy wanted her daughters to look beautiful. So, the evil stepsisters forced Cinderella to prepare beautiful ball dresses for them. The next day arrived. Cinderella was very tired. Her little friends tried to wake her up. Cinderella, wake up! Wake up! You have to go to the ball! But I don't even have a dress. 
The only dress I have is dirty. Close your eyes, Cinderella. We have a surprise for you. Her little friends took Cinderella to the middle of the room. The white pigeon lifted the cover of the wall with its beak. Ta-da! Ta-da! I can't believe it. It looks amazing. Cinderella put on her new dress and did her hair, and finally went downstairs. But her evil stepsisters saw Cinderella and went crazy with jealousy. Lady Puffy didn't want Cinderella to go to the ball when she saw that she was prettier than her own daughters. So she threw a bowl of beans into the fireplace in the living room for Cinderella to pick up. If you can pick up the beans out of the ashes and put them back into the bowl within five minutes, you can come to the ball with us. <laughs> Cinderella wanted to go to the ball so much that she began to pick up the beans. Her little friends saw her situation and came to help. Within five minutes, they picked up all the beans and put them back into the bowl. Cinderella ran after Lady Puffy, who was already leaving, and showed the full bowl to her. Lady Puffy still did not want Cinderella to go to the ball, so this time she used Cinderella's dirty dress as an excuse. And they left Cinderella in the house and went on to the prince's castle. Poor Cinderella was very sad. She sat down in the garden and wept and cried right under a hazelnut tree that her mother had planted long ago. And just then, the hazelnut tree began to shake and to shine, and a beautiful fairy appeared in front of Cinderella. My name is Leabelle, and I am here to help you. Don't be sad. You will go to that ball as well. But how am I supposed to go to the ball like this? Leave that to me. Hmm, I just need a pumpkin. The other things I need are already here. Cinderella came back, holding a pumpkin in her hands. Fairy Leabelle began to wave her magic wand around and turned the pumpkin into a beautiful coach the mice into very nice horses, and the pigeon into a well-dressed coach driver. Cinderella couldn't believe what she saw. But how did you do this, Leabelle? The fairy waved her magic wand again and put Cinderella in a beautiful blue dress. On her feet appeared sparkling glass slippers. I look like a princess now. Thank you, Leabelle. Now it's time for you to go to the ball. Hurry up. The fairy warned Cinderella before she headed to the ball. But don't forget, you need to be back at midnight or else the magic will be gone and everything will be as it was before. Cinderella listened to the fairy carefully and finally headed to the castle. The pumpkin coach stopped in front of the big castle. Cinderella, with her overwhelming beauty, entered the castle. The guests of the ball saw Cinderella and wondered who this beautiful young lady was. Neither Lady Puffy nor her daughters realized that this beautiful girl was Cinderella. Prince Leo moved towards Cinderella and fell in love at first sight. Beautiful young lady, may I have this dance, please? Cinderella was mesmerized by the magical dance with Prince Leo so that she forgot about the time. 
when the clock was just about to strike twelve, she remembered the fairy's warning. You need to be back at midnight or else! Cinderella left the prince back and ran out of the castle quickly. Where are you going? I don't even know your name. Cinderella ran down the castle's stairs and all of a sudden lost one of her glass slippers. Unfortunately, she did not have time to go back and take it. So she ran to the coach as fast as she could and left the castle. Find the beautiful owner of this lost slipper. If necessary, every girl in the country shall try on this shoe. As soon as the clock stroke twelve, everything turned back to what it was before. Cinderella went back to her room in the attic. She thought about the magical night she had had with Prince Leo and realized that she fell in love. But it seemed to be impossible that the prince would recognize her with her old dirty clothes. Time passed, and the prince had a huge mansion built next to the castle for the precious glass slipper. All the young girls living in the next country visited this place to try the slipper on. Even Lady Puffy and her daughters visited the famous mansion, but did not take Cinderella with them. You stay at home. It is impossible that the shoe belongs to you. Right, the shoe is going to fit Cassandra or to me. But I also am a young girl living in this country. I have the right to try on the shoe as well. Lady Puffy did not even listen to Cinderella. She locked her up in the house and left with her daughters. Of course, the glass slippers did neither fit to Cassandra's feet nor to Jezebel's. Ah, if I try only a little bit more, I think it will fit. At nighttime, when the mansion's lights were sparkling, Cinderella made it out of the house, thanks to mozzarella and cheddar. She arrived at the majestic mansion and walked towards the sparkling glass slipper. As she was just about to try on the shoe, Prince Leo stepped into the room. Stop! Don't move! You're going to damage the shoe! No, no, no! It's my shoe! It fits me perfectly! She is telling the truth! She is Cinderella! Cinderella courageously put on the shoe in front of Prince Leo, and he realized that the shoe you fits perfectly that night to Cinderella. You, you are the beautiful girl I danced with on that night. May I know your name? My name is Cinderella, Your Highness. Will you marry me, Cinderella? Cinderella happily said yes to the prince, whom she fell in love with. They got married in the big castle and lived happily ever after. One day, the vain, evil-hearted Queen Hela called her chamberlain, Dunkov. Unveil my magic mirror, Dunkov. Chamberlain Dunkov was clumsy and pulled the cover down onto himself. You fool! Get out right now! The queen admired herself in the mirror and then said, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? The magic mirror answered her, in this land, my queen, you are no longer fairest in the land. Snow White is the most beautiful. Hela became 
very angry. It can't be. No one can be more beautiful than me. The whole castle seemed to shake with her anger, and her evil heart wanted to destroy the beauty of Snow White. She made a plan and ordered the royal huntsman to take Snow White into the enchanted woods and kill her. And bring me back her heart. Snow White trusted the royal huntsman and went with him into the woods. Along the way, she saw a wounded bird on the ground. And Snow White picked up the bird to help heal its wing. Behind her, the royal huntsman sneaked up on her and took out his bow to shoot Snow White. He drew back the bow and took aim, but he could see that the girl had a kind heart as she held the wounded bird, and he decided it was wrong to kill Snow White. Snow White, she ordered me to take your life. I can't kill a person as good and kind as you. Who wants to take my life? It's Queen Hela. You must run away and hide. The huntsman chose to trick the queen and killed a wild boar instead so he could take the boar's heart to the queen and make Hela think that the princess was dead. The princess was terrified and ran through the dark woods. She struggled through sharp branches and bats in the night until she could run no further. She collapsed against a tree and fell asleep in the cold, dark, enchanted forest. When the huntsman reached the castle, he marched directly to the queen. I have fulfilled your command. Queen Hela took the box and examined the heart. She believed that Snow White was dead and her evil laughter echoed through the castle. <laughs> When the sun finally rose, Snow White woke up in the heart of the forest, and there before her was the cutest little house with a small garden gate and picket fence, tiny windows with a doorbell, and a round green door. She rang the bell, but no one answered, and when she reached for the door to knock, it opened. Inside, everything was so small that it felt like she was in a toy house. Tiny pots, tiny spoons, glasses. When she found a tiny bowl of soup, she was so hungry that she ate it. And then fell asleep on a tiny bed. Not far away, the owners of the house finished their work in the mines and went home. As soon as they entered, they knew something was wrong. So they walked quietly and whispered. Shh. Uh, someone has eaten my bread. Mm. Someone has used my plate. Someone is sleeping in my bed right now. Mm. Such a beautiful girl. Get the lamp! Whoa. Catch! Yikes! Phew! Oh, oh, what, what? Shh! She's awakened. She's hiding under the blanket. Hmm. Don't be afraid of us, little girl. We are the seven dwarves. I am Ace, and these are jolly, angry, curious, silly, shy, and lazy. Well, I... I 
am Snow White. I'm sorry I wandered into your house. Snow White told them everything that had happened to her, and the dwarves were very sad to hear her tale. So they said she could stay with them in their little house. Far away, in another land, there was a young, handsome prince. His name was Antoine. He loved sitting outside at night and looking at the stars, which reminded him of the people he loved. One night, he saw the face of Snow White in the starry sky and felt he should seek her out. A fairy told him she was in danger and gave him a magical heart necklace. So Prince Antoine got his trusty horse and rode away to find the beautiful face in the sky. Back in the castle, the evil-hearted Hela was again in front of her magic mirror. Dunkov, uncover the magic mirror. Let me see my beauty. Dunkov entered. But the cover got caught on the mirror, and he almost knocked it over. Dunkov is such a clumsy assistant. Always, at the most critical times, he becomes awkward and clumsy. The queen was continually annoyed with him. When Dunkov had left, Queen Hela again asked the mirror to tell her how beautiful she was. Nearer, nearer on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? Sorry, my queen, but Snow White, who lives with the seven dwarves, is the fairest in the land. Ah, no, no! I thought Snow White was dead! The queen stayed up all night, making evil plans to kill Snow White once and for all. She decided the best way to disguise herself, so she changed into a cute little bunny. In the morning, the dwarves went off to work. One by one, they kissed Snow White on the cheek and walked to the mine. And they warned her to be careful while in the house alone. Now, princess, don't open the door to strangers. It isn't safe. The forest seemed peaceful, and Snow White began to water the flowers in the garden. The princess noticed a little bunny sitting in the garden, who seemed hurt. She went over and picked it up and brought it inside the house. She bandaged the rabbit's hurt leg and let it rest in the sun on the dwarf's bed. The bunny seemed like it was sleeping, but as soon as the princess left the room, the rabbit opened its eyes and looked around. Then it jumped, 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 and turned back into the evil Queen Hela. This was exactly what she had planned. She poured purple poison into the pillow, thinking that the princess would sleep there and die from the poison. Snow White was so tired from working in the garden that she went inside to rest. She was just about to put her head down on the poisoned pillow. Snow White! <laughs> Snow White! When she heard the dwarves come home, the princess met them at the door, and after a delicious dinner, they danced all night long. Snow White fell asleep in front of the fireplace, and it's a good thing that she did, because then she wouldn't be sleeping on the poisonous pillow. When the queen returned to her castle, Dunkov was still asleep, guarding her door. Thinking her plan had succeeded, she went to the magic mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? My queen, Snow White, who lives with the seven dwarves, is more beautiful than you. Gah! No! No! No, no, no! I should be the most beautiful in all the land! Me! I will make a plan that will kill Snow White! A few days later, while the dwarves worked in the mine, Snow White was sewing some of the dwarves' worn clothing. And then, she heard a knock on the door. The door was knocked three times. 
Snow White looked through the door to see who it was. And it was an old, ugly woman with a basket of apples. Who are you? I'm a saleswoman. I have very delicious apples. Would you like to try one? Snow White was afraid to open the door at first, but she loved red apples. Here you go. Enjoy it, my beautiful child. A free sample. Snow White took the apple given by the old woman and took a bite. The apple had been poisoned. She fell to the ground before she could even cry out for help. <laughs> Just down the road, Prince Antoine rested his horse in the shade of a tree. He had traveled far to find the beautiful face he had seen in the sky. Just off the road, he saw an old woman walking along. He was about to go speak with her, when suddenly, she transformed into the evil Queen Hela. The prince and his horse were stunned, and he decided to not go ask her for directions. Later that night, when the dwarves came home, they saw Snow White still and lifeless on the floor. They were so sad, and their hearts were broken into a thousand pieces. They crafted a beautiful glass coffin and carried her to the country's longest river so that all the people of the kingdom would know of her beauty. Just downstream, the prince was traveling on his horse on the riverbank, and he noticed the glass coffin in the boat. He recognized the face of the girl immediately. The prince was very sad. But he opened the cover of the coffin. He took the stardust necklace from his pocket and put it on the princess. Goodbye, my princess. Shine like a star wherever you are. But just then, the prince saw Snow White moo. The stardust necklace was magical and rewarded him for his diligent search of the face he saw in the sky. Snow White revived. When she awoke, she was amazed to have such a handsome prince standing beside her, rescuing her. When they eventually got to shore and returned to Snow White's castle, she and Prince Antoine told the king everything. When the king learned what Queen Hela did to Snow White, he banished her from the kingdom. The king locked the magic mirror and all of the queen's possessions into the dungeon of the castle. Many months later, Snow White and the prince fell in love because this was not an arranged marriage and had a beautiful wedding in the castle. They invited the dwarves and celebrated and lived happily ever after. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, an old farmer called his two sons to speak with them. My sons, I am very old now. I want to see you build a happy home with your future wives. The farmer went out to the wooded area in the garden with his sons. He asked his sons to each cut down a tree. You will find the love of your life in the direction your tree falls. But do not forget to plant a sapling for every tree that you cut. The boys first planted two saplings in the ground. The big brother Jack cut down the oldest tree he had ever seen, as his father had said and the tree fell on the north walkway. Later, youngest brother Thomas cut down an old tree. 
but his tree fell in the middle of the forest road. Looks like a deer in the forest is waiting for you to get married. <laughs> Thomas didn't let his brother's teasing bother him. Both brothers set out with great courage. After a while, Jack reached his true love, whom he found in the north. He gave her flowers and asked her to be his wife. But Thomas was wandering alone in the desolate forest. Eventually, he saw a small hut among the trees. He went in, but didn't see anyone. There's no one here. What do you mean there is no one? I'm here. What? A mouse was gently combing her mustache in a corner of the hut. You look disappointed, hmm? Okay, but you are a mouse, not a human. I came here to find the love of my life. The little mouse told Thomas that she could be the love of his life. But Thomas didn't believe it. Then I'm sorry. You won't find another girl in this forest. I'm the only one here to be your true love. But how can I trust you? I promise you, right now, with all my heart, I will be your princess. Thomas was impressed by these words and felt that, somehow, this must be his true love. That evening, the two brothers told their farmer father about the people they had met. Tell me, can the people you met cook well? Yes, she can cook. Then I ask each spouse to make me a loaf of bread. Along the way, Thomas went to the hut he had discovered in the woods, wondering if a mouse could make bread. He immediately asked the little mouse if she could make bread. Of course I can. Wait a little. The little mouse rang a silver triangular bell. Then a few mice came to her. The little mouse asked them for the best wheat grain they could find. As Thomas watched in amazement, one of the mice brought the best wheat grain. The little mouse made a delicious bread from this wheat grain. Thomas thanked the little mouse and returned home immediately. Big Brother Jack brought his father a rye bread and Thomas a fresh wheat bread. Both of your breads look very good, but the freshest is the bread that Thomas brought. <laughs> Tell me, Thomas, is your spouse a forest princess? <laughs> the farmer told his sons that it was time to meet their wives. Thomas went to the little mouse's house with great joy. The little mouse, in her best attire, rang the silver triangular bell. A beautiful car with a driver came right before her. The little mouse got into the car and they drove home with Thomas. As they were moving along the road, they came across a rickety bridge built over the river. The mouse driver did not notice a stone on the bridge, and it made the car bounce the mouse right into the river with her car. Oh no, my love, my love, what am I going to do now? Thomas wept on the bridge and the tears fell into the deadly river waters below. A beautiful young lady appeared in front of him. She had silver hair and blue eyes. Thomas, it's okay. Come with me or we'll be late. What? How? how? You, you? Yes, Thomas, it's me, your love. I've been under an evil spell for a long time. If your tears hadn't mixed with the river water, I would have remained a mouse for the rest of my life. Thanks to your love for me, I am a princess again, Thomas. Thomas and the beautiful princess finally arrived at Thomas's house. 
Thomas, my son, we are so glad you introduced us to such a lovely princess. It turns out that Thomas's luck was not due to the tree he cut, but to the fact that he was kind to every animal and human being he saw. From that day on, Thomas and the beautiful princess, who was once a mouse, lived happily together for a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs>